Today we're fortunate to have Ron Hendrickson here to talk about the trapping experiences from three generations going back to his uh, grandfather trapping in the late uh, 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, I remember him talking about um, uh, an Indian, uh, native Indian village uh, a short distance from uh, Ivan or even Roberg's place and they uh, showed my grandpa Helmer uh, how to snare fur bearing animals along with uh, a lot of the trapping skills that, uh, that he uh, uh, used uh, heavily uh, as he got older. When he was at 14 years of age, I remember him talking about uh, uh, he was running a 10 mile trap line and uh, uh, I remember him uh, telling about pulling a, a small uh, toboggan-like sled and uh, which he had for his trapping supplies and also the fur-bearing animals that he was catching. He would walk like uh, the first five miles of the of the trap line one day, and he he talked about a, um, a little trapper's cabin or or shack he called it that he would uh, stay in overnight and then continue on the next uh, leg of the trapping uh, line uh, and then come back again to the uh, uh, trapping cabin then again the next day so. Actually, his his uh, ten mile trap line consisted of a four day outing for him. I remember him telling uh, that was when he first started trapping. Uh, he uh, was trapping uh, muskrats for revenue of seven cents apiece, and which uh, which was the turn of the century then, and which was seven cents uh, in today's revenue, which isn't much, but for then it was, uh, was a fair amount. And um, I know he talked about uh, when they um, purchased the farmstead in uh, 1915, him and his wife Alma, my grandma, they had saved a lot of that trapping money, which was uh, how they paid for the, the homestead at that time. Also, he uh, talked about um, when he moved in with uh, uh, Ivan Roberg when he was um, like 11 years old or going to be 12, uh, he was uh, Ivan and, and a, a distant neighbor, uh, Henry Bierke was his name, was uh, heavy in the wolf hunting. And I remember him talking about that they'd switch off making drives to drive the wolves. And they hunted it with, with Mausers. And uh, my grandpa said that he got uh, so good with uh, those Mausers that he could uh, pick off a running wolf at a quarter mile away. And um, it was, uh, uh, you know, a far cry from uh, the firearms which are used today for, for hunting. I know when uh, we would uh, catch our game and we would uh, uh, skin uh, the game and we would uh, put them on stretchers, which I'll be showing you uh, later on here, and then we'd have to fletch them, uh, fletch the furs, and uh, we used uh, for packing uh, these furs and which we uh, shipped to uh, Sears and Roebuck in Chicago, or also the New York Fur Exchange or Hudson Bay uh, Fur Company. And we would use a, uh, like, uh, a material like similar to paper grocery bags. And um, it was uh, a, a, a stiff type paper which would support the furs and keep them in, for, in, firm, in uh, form then when they were being shipped. The very first thing that I remember when I was working at the cafe and um, then my father-in-law to be then said I could ride out with him to the farm for the weekend because I guess my husband was in the field. And so I, when I got done working, I got in the car with him and we went home. 
Guess what he had in the back seat of the car but a dead skunk and it smelled just terrible. I remember one time, <laughs> one time when I had, a, I had baked donuts the day before and I had my kettle of grease sitting there. What do you think? He'd hung some furs over there to dry and the blood had run from the furs. And <laughs> so it ruined my donut lard. Okay, I'm just going to show you some things that uh, my grandpa Helmer um, basically built. There's this uh, muskrat trap that he handmade. Um, and if you look at uh, the modern day one, which he also used uh, for uh, stretching muskrats, uh, when we were trapping uh, with him, we'd, uh, and, and also before we were trapping with him, we would. Um, uh, have to uh, skin and stretch and then fletch uh, uh, these these fur-bearing animals. Uh, this one here is uh, uh, a mink stretcher that he handmade, and here's another one for a larger uh, uh, fur-bearing uh, mink. And this uh, here would be a uh, fox stretcher which he. Uh, handmade, uh, which you can see that uh, for the larger animals, of course, you're going to have uh, a larger stretcher. Uh, these are some of the, the traps that um, he used at his time, and we also used them uh, uh, at, when we were trapping uh, uh, my dad and, and myself and and my siblings. This here is a wolf trap, uh, which you can see is quite a bit larger than uh, the fox trap. Uh, my grandpa always preferred uh, using uh, the name brand Newhouse uh, traps, and uh, he also used some Victor, but he preferred uh, using the Newhouse traps. Uh, on these uh, traps here, what they call a double spring, which which was used mainly for uh, catching mink, and these smaller uh, traps here, uh, which were used mainly for trapping muskrats and uh, for trapping. We did a lot of pocket gopher trapping through the summertime. It's um, something that uh, you grow up with, and it becomes part of you. You know just like uh, uh, myself and, and my siblings. Well, that became, uh, you know, you remember some of the things that, and the fun that it, it, uh, it was, uh, along with, uh, for us growing up, well, you know, we'd be trapping pocket gophers, muskrat, and mink, and, and uh, it was an additional dollar for us to put in our pocket, you know.